in life we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for other people. When we talk about these things, we're really looking at how do I make a difference for the person right in front of me? It's more than just listening. The late Steve Shapiro talked a great deal about the gift of listening. That the gift of listening isn't just going, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, and not taking any notes. The gift of listening is literally sitting there and truly fully listening. Not proposing something in your mind, not talking to other people, not whispering behind someone's back, not literally putting a play in motion that makes you feel like you're a superhero or you can fix something that you can't literally fix. I've spent a lot of time with a lot of people in the last few days, not exactly, but at the same time, what I mean is that in life, we have moments of time to make the truth be known and the lies to be put out to pasture. See, when a person is truthful, they're always at risk to the liars because liars can gang together and continue a lie. Truthful people often get harmed because they're so honest, because they're so truthful, not because they're naive, because they were raised to believe that honesty and integrity mean something, that the truth is the truth, and that a person's right to privacy and right to confidentiality and right to proprietary information and intellectual property is literally their own. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for other people. We have a moment of time to be a good listener. We have moments of time to say, hey, how can I best help you in this situation so that everybody wins in this moment in time? We also have the right to say, you know, this sounds like it was just a simple misunderstanding. Let's leave it alone and let it go. But there are people who persecute others, and that's a problem we have in America. We are no longer the land of the free, and we're definitely the home of the brave, but that home of the brave doesn't mean the same thing anymore. Long ago, home of the brave meant something that we were literally fighting for the rights of our land in other worlds away. We were literally saying, look, freedom is what's important here. The freedom to be who we are, the freedom to love who we want, and the freedom to protect our own selves from all the harm and theft that goes on in a world where people are jealous of other people's property, insight, intelligence, and everything else that goes on with jealousy. Jealousy is a debasing type of morality. It's a morality that says, I'm going to take from you because I'm in a position of power to do so. Jealousy is one of those things that says, I'm going to steal from your property. I'm going to monkey around with your mind. I'm going to pretend like I'm not doing it. I'm going to lie about it, and I'm going to try and feel some way that God is letting me do this to show you something, to teach you something about God. The reality is that most of those people don't know anything there is to know about God. There's a very interesting candidate coming into the pool right now for the presidential election who openly has written many works on spirituality, on relationships, and other things. Don't you think she would be a very interesting prospect for a candidate? I mean, let's face it, she has studied literally hundreds of thousands of data, I would imagine. And I don't know exactly the correct lexicon to talk about it, but I imagine she's done a lot of research, she's conducted a lot of interviews, and she knows quite a lot about the human condition of spirit, of soul, of mind, of heart, of all the things that makes a person unique to themselves as an individual. When we talk about this individual, it's not that hard to pick her out. She's written literally several hundred works, I'm guessing, not only in book form, but in other types of articles across the globe. We have to really allow Marion to have a chance in this election because she's starting to do something very unique with her website that's worth looking at. It's not fully there according to a marketing perspective, but for the people who don't know her, it might be just the right shtick for her to get herself a little further along the election. These men who are latecomers and coming into the game to throw their hat in, I don't find them impressive at all. I don't see their wives touting their names, and I certainly don't see the relationship in that relationship at all. It's not like in the days of old when you could definitely see the relationship between Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan, or some of the other presidents that we've long gone through and suffered through, like the Bushes, but the reality is they still did good works in the land. What we're really needing is a power couple, a couple that knows Hollywood, a couple that has an understanding of literature, a couple that understands the power of education, a couple that understands human rights across the land as well as across the globe. We also need a couple who understands the law. And openly, it doesn't have to be a couple by our traditional sense of couplehood, but it has to be someone who understands that coupling is one of the most fundamental things that all of us long to do. The truth is most people don't want to live alone in their old age. Most people would like to live out their days with someone special, someone to hold on to, someone they love. And in those cases, these are the most fundamental aspects of being American, that we get to literally choose who that person is, that we get to decide who we take home to our own bed and become a bedfellow with us or someone to participate in pillow talk, and that literally no one else in the land can tell us what we can and can't do 
in those moments of time. You certainly don't want me in your bedroom and i keeping score and I certainly don't want to be there. And most people are just like that. They respect the right to privacy, the right to the privilege of the human naked body, and they openly don't take advantage of those situations of time when they're in a position of slight power, being a physician, a nurse, or other healthcare provider. We really truly have to look at two major industries in this land in order to protect our entire nation from human trafficking. The first is law enforcement, the second is health care. Those are the two greatest risks points we have right now to the land of people not understanding rights, not understanding legalities, not understanding liabilities, and not understanding where their rights end and someone else's begins. We also desperately need to look at the environment and food production. How do we safeguard our food? And usually women get this because they're a part of that production in a way in the moments of time that they're in maternity. But I don't mean that in an appropriate way. What I mean is that they really understand how important it is to have nourishing milk, nourishing dairy products, and other aspects of the actual aspects of the land in which we were gifted, if you will, by the Lord in heaven for those who believe in a faith or whatever your spirituality is, but also by the forefathers the Native Indians who saved us at Plymouth Rock and other things and other stories and folklore that we've all learned through our entire history of going through the educational systems of America. When people come here who've never participated in those systems, they don't have the same honor for our foods. They don't have the same interest in keeping us safe. They'd like to take over our homes sometimes. They'd like to have our possessions sometimes. They literally will go into our houses at the beckoning of their own selves or our own family members to steal things from us and we have to stop that right now. You see, in life, there's only three things that are important to the normal human being, and that is quite simply personhood, paperwork, and property. That's it. Underneath personhood, it's our physical being. Underneath paperwork, it's our legal documents and our finances and our resources. And underneath the property, it's literally our possessions in life, our automobiles that give us transportation, our homes, literally, that keep us safe and sheltered, and other aspects of our entire enjoyment of life vacationing, travel, gifts from other people, etc., gifts we plan to give. In life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world, but if we don't make those moments happen, if we literally are lazy, if we say, oh, it's too late for that now, or I messed up and I should have done it this way, then you've missed out on an opportunity to show that you have God in your soul at all. When a man needs to make amends, he tries very hard. When he goes as far as he can go and she still won't say okay, that's on her, not on him. When she fails to do her part, she is liable to that in front of the house of the Lord. Now, I talk a lot about God because I'm a person of faith, but I also believe that this land was founded on that premise that we all have the right to have a faith or not, if we so choose. And in the house of the Lord, we've got a lot of hatred spewing on both sides and every color of the spectrum. We have to really work on that, and female presidents can really help us to deplete and diminish and destroy that lineage, that lineage that ideology of hatred in the land. Now, this has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications LLC saying, let's elect a female president this time around. It doesn't matter the color of her skin. It doesn't matter what her background is entirely, but she better understand what's important to all men and all women, which is straightforward personhood, paperwork, and property. Thanks for listening.